Going back to Gary's season, we go to um, uh, Alaska, mm -hmm. Alabama, and Missouri in that order. Wind up playing against Eric Edwards' team from Delaware. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of the school. Uh, playing the, the, the CHSAA. It was a gauntlet. Yep. But one week, I believe it was um, MASH first Mash with first. Hayes. Mm -hmm. Talentine second. Talentine second. Or Hollow's third. Yep. We beat those teams. And the game that stands out, you probably played well and all, but was the Talentine game. Okay. I thought that was the beginning was, of like T Wrench as we. So St. John's was there. Indiana was was Indiana there? I don't remember, but it was a lot of schools. There was coaches there, and you like yeah. had the game of your life as far as no, I it was remember. up to that point. That was definitely the game of my life. I mean. You know, that was talented. You know, those guys were Brian Reese, right, right on the Boo Bethel, Wayman Bone. Down the line, yeah. Um, and you know, th th those guys were the standard for us, right? Right, reach those. You know, me at the same race, like we we were chasing that. I'm just being mm -hmm. honest, like that's where we were trying to go. So, winning that game on that stage and playing the way I played, obviously, it gave me even more confidence in myself. Put me a little bit further on the map in terms of being recruited by some of those people that were at that game. But I think the thing that changed the most, to be honest is that from my peers, from especially the class older, which was Red and Reese and some of those guys, Mash and Sean L. Scott and all those guys that were a year older and played up in terms of the Riverside, you know, they were always a year mm -hmm. older than the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That started making them put me in that peer group, right? I mm -hmm. wasn't a little man, so I'm a little man, he gonna be good. That game- You were good now. I'm, I'm good, now. he good now, you know what I'm saying? And he's a threat, he's serious business, and uh, here we go. So that, that game right there, Changed the trajectory of, I think, my high school career. And, and, and it allowed St. Raymond's to be uh, pushed into the national spotlight. Mm -hmm. First time in the top 25. Obviously, that year was ups and downs. You go into your senior year, mm -hmm. phenomenal season. You guys cap it off with a city championship. Yeah. Down the stretch, like slow motion, just it was all playing. Like, I'm watching it. I, don't, I wasn't at the game. I so was watching it on MSG. I was there. Was I there? You were there. You were there. You were there. I'm sure you were there. I probably saw the recap yeah. on TV. It was better than even in person. Yeah, it was loud. So, what is that feeling knowing where you came from as the freshman? Of, like, I was proud. Yeah. Yeah, because you contributed. Of you know, course. But it, 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 the craziest part about that whole thing, and I, and I tell people this to this day, and I know it's hard to really fathom, it's hard to really imagine. Because I, I, I was drafted, I was a second round draft pick, you know, played the league for a hot minute, 10 year career in Europe, high level, you know, obviously played at Texas, was Dick Vitale, National Freshman of the Year. A lot of accolades came after mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But winning the city championship state race, my best pure basketball memory of my life. You just stole one of my questions for later, but that's cool, <laughs> right? But, 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 I mean, I could see it because I, I lived it yeah. and I, I knew what it was. So you, you mentioned Dick Vitale, National Freshman of the Year. Mm -hmm. So 1991 class, arguably one of the top classes in, in going into college. Going into college was heavy. Fab Five. Fab Five, Glenn Robinson, so, Kevin Ali. I mean, you know, it's, it's it, a lot of dudes that they know now. Right. That's from that class. Travis Bass. Yeah, Travis Bass, James so, Cordell, you can go down the line. Right. Yeah. And you win National Freshman of the Year. 18 points a game? 19. <laughs> <laughs> so, you average 19 points a game, yeah. and, 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 and Texas is, is coming off the Joey Wright, uh, Travis Mays. Blanks, yeah, yeah. So you're the next one. Yeah. Are you thinking NBA at this time? You know what, I wasn't, it was different. You know, think about, we had so many conversations after practice, walking to the bus stop. Whatever we was doing, shop. piece of shop. You got a dollar, I got a dollar. Let's yeah, let's make it happen. Right. You got to take the time capsule in consideration. It wasn't that wasn't like on the front consciousness of players at the time. Even the good players. I mean, everybody was focused on college. You know, I'm sure we all dreamed or had visions of that at some point. But you know, for me, it was always 
you know, growing up during that Big East era and, you know, watching all these guys, like my excitement was to go to college and be a good player. Whatever came beyond that was going to be cherry on the top. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, I, after my freshman year, that was when it first started because other people started. I started going to Houston and playing down there with Kenny Smith and, you know, the guys on the Rockets and, you know, moving around the state in Texas, you know, mm -hmm. to, to play and, and, and hoop. And that's when it started, oh, man, you're on your way, you're on your way. So that's when it really started hit me. You know what I mean? It wasn't really even on my radar, even up until that point, until it started coming from outside. And people who saw what I did that year as a freshman, you know, starting to put that in the air. And um, that, that's kind of when that... Okay, so you go through your sophomore year, mm -hmm. you guys play well, you, you, you go through your junior year, and you accomplish something that, obviously a record that will never be broken, all-time leading scorer in Southwest Conference history. That's in the books. Uh, all-time leading scorer in Texas University history in the books. Uh, most importantly, you was able to go back and get your degree. Super proud of you for that. Um, and you look like a legend. University of Texas basketball history, right? So if you could just sum up kind of what that means to you, that time period in your life of being in Texas, kind of embracing the culture. Mm -hmm. I know you lived in Austin for many years. Yeah. What was that like for you knowing that you did that for that university? Yeah, you know, again, it's, it's, an, it's one of those instances where, you know, I had as a player, as I was growing up, I had, you know, my goals in my head and as I got to one or exceeded one, it was really just a check, right? Kind check. of my own little check off, check off. Right. Because you win it. I'm doing it, right? I'm, yeah. I right, did that. Every day. Next thing. They did that. So I'm not appreciating anything. Yeah, I don't East know. Orange Pray on the Yeah, you got to go, 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 yeah, go down to Jersey Shore. There's a lot, right. you know what I mean? So you're just in it, right? So mm -hmm. you're not really paying it that much attention. Mm -hmm. um, now that I'm older, it's, it, it means so much more to me, right? Just to know that. Um, there's a legacy that's that's been left. Yeah. Right that, that that's what makes me most proud. Not the fact that I don't know how many exactly that I scored twenty three hundred six points <laughs> in college. Uh, right. Or that I'm the all time leader in steals too. That they don't really talk about much. Right. Right. It's not really the number for right. me. It's just the fact that you know I did something that a lot of people still remember. Yeah. That I'm respected for. Right. And that not many people can. Or will do, you know. Right. What I mean? So I feel so like you're special. I feel like I'm, I separated myself, and mm -hmm. you know, and, I, and, I, I got it. I got what I came to get out of the game. And, and to and to that point, you were able to be fortunate enough to to get drafted to go into mm -hmm. the NBA. Um, obviously, spent time with the Miami Heat. Mm -hmm. Funny story. You're playing in Ohio State. I drive down yeah. to the game, yeah. Yeah. chopping it up, and I'm like, "Yo, let's go see my man." Whatever the case may be, I still owe you ninety three dollars from that day. What the tickets? No. What happened? You was like, yo, you good? Ah, I dropped you off a little something? Yeah, so. Oh, okay, we'll get to that. You know, that's inflation. That's what's that, 27 years? That's probably about six fifty. Ninety-three dollars <laughs> exactly. And it was balled up in your pocket. Yeah, so we had, <laughs> like, you know, you know, I used to always carry it. You know look, look, so, so, you know, just from that 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 brotherhood of, of, of like, dang, my man is in the NBA. I was still in college at the time. Um, I believe I was coaching or something like that. But you go through the NBA, so, being an NBA player, coming from where you came from, how was the reception of people around you and how did they, how did they receive it? I know how you received yeah. it because, you know what I mean, we lived it. Yeah, that, that was the, the, the kind of the best and the worst part, kind of the people around me. You know what I mean? Like, because okay. obviously the best part is that you made so many people proud, right? From your family, friends, just your, your community in general. And just, you know, and then you just branch out. The Bronx is proud and New York is proud. You know, you just, you, you, yeah. you're a source of pride for everybody. So that's, a, that's the great part about it. The flip side of that is, you know, and, and you know, it's a lot of different phrases that, that, that go along with it. But, you know, when you start making a little money or you get a certain profile, like the people around you start to change a little bit. And that I was asked for the $93. No, no, we was different, though. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But the people, like, in my neighborhood and, you know, some started to get funny. Not funny, but just like treating me like no, no, no. They didn't no, know no, me no, no, no. from I'm the snotty nose. You know what I mean? Funny. Yeah, acting funny with it, and that was the most disappointing part of, you know, that experience. You know what I mean? The people who because knew they, me from they, they may think that. you have more than you had. Yeah, or just or looking at me a certain way where I know. Listen, I'm, I get on TV a little bit, and I got a little bit of a talent here or there, but 
I mean, hey, nothing right different from when I used to come outside every day and sit in front of this building or whatever the case may right. be. So that was a little weird for me. Uh -huh. um, Big adjustment, though. Because Big because these are day one yeah, people, yeah, 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 right? And, those, and, yeah. and, you know, your circle changes. Mm -hmm. You're around Michael Jordan and, and, and yeah, Charles Barkley. You're playing on a team crazy. with Charles Barkley. Yeah, yeah. And, and so the conversations changes, your goals and aspiration changes, and sometimes people don't understand that, you know, you can't stay stagnant. No. It doesn't mean there's any less respect or right. love for yeah. a person. It's evolution. It is, yeah. man, yeah. and you have yeah. to evolve as a yeah. person. So you were fortunate to be able to play for a long time as a professional and get paid well to do that, uh, both in the NBA and internationally. Uh, start a beautiful family, big shout out to Faye, and the girls, right? Big shout out to that. Um, and now you're, 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 you're a responsible adult, you're a father. And what made you get into coaching? Well, it's funny, you know, I'm being totally honest. You know, I played and you're, I was 33 when I stopped playing. Okay. And I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't until I was about 31 that I started thinking, okay, all right, you gotta start figuring this, this next deal out, all right? I didn't, right. I didn't sign for 300 million and you know what I mean? So we all still had to live and mm -hmm. you know provide and things like that. So um, that was just it was just about let's, let me go back to school and get my degree. And while I'm there, that's when I moved from New Jersey back down to Austin. I can start to try to figure this thing out. Um, so when I went back to school, I was around the basketball program at the time. The year Kevin played, KD played. Mm -hmm. um, they they gave me a job as the academic mentor of that team, so I traveled with them, and I was the guy who ran study hall on the road. Okay. And then you know I was the study hall mentor. So. Perks of being an all time leading scorer. Yeah. So you know and just that's a whole another topic. You know watching KD, you know his early you know development during yeah. that time, but you know just being around that program and sitting in the film room with them and watching practice and. So I'm pretty you know, sure just, you you had a title, but you gave so much more from a basketball. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. No perspective yeah. And, and, yeah. and being able to teach and show mm -hmm. guys because you just came from playing. Did you get any practices? No, nah, but I played pickup. I used to play pickup with them. I didn't. Okay. I wasn't doing still cooking. Thing. I was holding my own still pretty good. You know, they asked me was I gonna keep playing. I mean, I was I was still pretty good at the time. Okay. Um, but at, so that's kind of what started giving me the juice. Like, man, I, you know. And then I'm thinking back. And then I started thinking, okay, where can I affect the most kids? The, in the best manner that I can. And I just thought about how impressionable I was from 18 to 22 and the decisions that I made for better or worse at that time and how they still affected me to this day. And I just felt like that was my lane right there. Okay, I can get with these dudes. I had success, I had some failures at the, in that age. I kind of know what they're going through. I know what they're striving for. I've kind of been where they want to go. Mm -hmm. So it just made that kind of sense to me to jump into college coaching. Um, and you love basketball. And obviously that's the common denominator. That's that's the thread right there. But for me, you know, and you get older, you start to have these discussions with yourself and, you know, trying to really figure out your perspective. And for me, it's just simply as a man, part of my duty is to help raise this next generation of men, first and foremost. I don't have any sons, so I have to find a way to affect this next generation of men, right? And then obviously, you know, we coach all types of kids. You speak the truth get, to light now, I gotta sit up in my chair. We're talking about affecting change in a generation. Like, like really affecting, right? So obviously we coach all types of kids, Asian kids, white kids, whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, where we come from is where we come from. And I'm really African American. So, Young kids. Yeah, so my, my, the foundation of what I do in terms of coaching basketball is about trying to impact the next generation of men. That's the foundation, and basketball helps me do that. So that's kind of my perspective. That, that's profound, man, yeah. and, and, and I appreciate that because, you know, I share the, the, those same sentiments in terms of, you know, the ways that I go about my business and mm -hmm. trying to, you know, impress my values and opinions and thoughts on, on young people in, in general. So, lastly, in terms of your career, before we have a little fun with it, um, you've gone on to many spots, right? St. Louis, St. Louis. Texas State, mm -hmm. uh, Tulsa, Tulsa, New Mexico, San Houston, Houston, yeah, and mm -hmm. now University of San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah. And and so now, if I know what I know, you're a goal-oriented guy. Mm -hmm. You, do you foresee yourself as a, as, a, as a head college coach? And what does a T Rencher led program look like? I mean, I, I've all, you know, obviously to each his own. I've run across guys who've been in this business 
25, 30 years who have no ambition to be an head coach. They like being assistants and helping mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, playing that part, which is fine. I understand that. But, you know, I just feel like, you know, first of all, yes, I do aspire to be a head coach in Division mm -hmm. One level. Um, but, you know, it's hard. You know, the, the deck is stacked. It's challenging. You already know what it is. Um, but that's never stopped me before from, you know, trying to join an elite company. You know what I mean? So you made it to the NBA from 174. And it, is it? It's, I don't. I don't think it gets much harder than that, especially in terms of percentages, right? Yeah. So definitely, so definitely. We've been beating the odds. Don't tell nobody. Uh, we been, been <laughs> smacking the odds around. Yeah. So looking to do it again yeah. in terms of coaching, and you know, it's funny. Uh, a, a program led by myself. It, it's funny because I have a couple different personalities, not in a bad psychotic way, right? But at home, you one way. Mm -hmm. Around the office on a day-to-day -day basis, you one way. Yeah. Then on the court, but, but everybody knows real. you as like the coolest, smoothest. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yo, right. yo, T, smooth. Exactly. Yo, that's my man. Yo, he's yo, good dude. But, and, uh, but basketball means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. I know how can it, it can affect people's lives in a positive manner mm -hmm. if you give yourself to it. Mm -hmm. And the discipline it takes to get there, that's tough. It's tough to do. It's even tougher to 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 put, you know to to project on a kid. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little rougher, probably a little less polished in my communication when we're dealing with this basketball game. Right. You know what I mean? Because passion I, comes out a little bit yeah, more. Because I understand what it can do for you. Right. Oh, on the flip side, what you can blow and 15 years later have the regrets that you know that, right. that I'm trying to keep you away from. So my teams would be. I, I would like to think a mix of poise. Mm -hmm. But you know, some fiery poise if I had a, had a way to phrase right. it. Yeah. So, usually like to have a little fun on the show. No doubt, let's do it. Best, best favorite teammate. Oh man, you know how many teammates I've had. Oh, my hold on. favorite Why teammate. You, so, 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 my favorite teammate. No, yeah, no. no. <laughs> Can't choose me. All right, my favorite teammate. Can't choose me. Man. That's so hard though because, yeah, because the problem is, is this. The problem is this. Here we go. Here's the problem you is this. I got a violin. You know why? I got a yeah, violin. Stop playing them. Stop playing them because I got from every pretty much every team I played on, I got a brother or two from that team. So I, I don't have like a lifetime of teammates. Like I got a bunch of dudes that's day ones that's still in my life heavily. It's hard to it's hard to pick one guy. You want to be a head coach or you want to be a politician? You got a poly to be what a head coach. What, what are we doing? You got a poly I just asked you a simple like question. Of, yeah, right, just give me an answer. My, Jeez. my favorite teammate? Yeah. Book was my favorite teammate. There it is. Okay. Big shout out to Book Richardson. Yeah, Book was my favorite teammate. That was tough. Beside, it was tough, right? That's, that's what I do. I ask tough questions. I'm going to go differently on this one. I know what it looked like. What did it feel like? Manhattan Center, on the break, right hand side, Elton. big fella jump. Was it Elton Richardson? No, no, it was the other, uh, the, the bigger guy, 6'7 dude. Oh, okay. That was the first dunk I saw you get in the game. My first game dunk, was it was an M1. I'll tell you the funny story behind it, you probably don't remember. Maybe a play or two before that, it was another fast break. Tried to lay it, missed, got contested, and Gary just lost it on me. Calling me every type of whatever, whatever. That's what it's Gary does. That yeah, they can call you. And he knew that dude. He just had a way about with me. He knew I played better angry. Mm -hmm. So he just started just digging at me, sure. digging at me, digging at me. So the next opportunity, I didn't even know I was gonna do it. I just went with all the force I had. Right. Really wasn't about anybody but Gary. <laughs> I was trying to dunk on him, really. <laughs> so I remember. You know, you don't really remember, remember it happened. I just remember like coming down and hearing the whistle and everybody going crazy. And I just remember just pointing at him and just, we were down one end of the court, he was down and I'm just cursing at him. And um, you know, so again, Gary, you know, kind of propelled me to do something I had never done or right, respected right, for something. Right, right, and that just speaks to coaches and, and, and knowing how to push kids mm -hmm. and, and, and hey, if that made you a better player, then great, great did. for it. Yeah. So, you've coached a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. Favorite player you coached? Favorite player I coach is actually a kid named um, Jordan Clarkson. Okay. I coached Jordan at Tulsa. Jordan um, is now currently, I think, with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't a bona fide short shot NBA player, 
but I knew he was going to be an NBA player because I saw how he behaved every day. And when I say behave, just the discipline, um, the work ethic, how serious he took the game, um, how he would wear me out watching film, getting extra work after practice. So, you know, just because of I, just because seeing his grind and coming from a guy who wasn't considered a short shot mm -hmm. NBA player to where he is now, kudos to JC. That's my guy. You got five seconds on the clock. Yeah. You coming down in fast break. Right wing, left wing. You got one pass to make. Down one. It's a two point shot. Who's getting the ball? Do I have to pass? Yo, you want to you wanna take my job, bro? No, I'm just saying, I, I think I might I, have the best look. I, I'm asking a question. I'm, you got to make the oh, pass. I have to go pass. Yeah, I, yeah. I got to make the pass. That's, that was the question. And did you not understand the question? I did, but I thought I had to. I, thought I, I asked the question, a specific right. question. Right, so we got it. So it's a two. Is it people I played with, coached, anybody ever? You what? played with. If I had to swing the ball for one, uh, one you got five shot. five seconds left. I, is, you won't know who I'm talking about. If you do, call me. I got a prize for you. There's a kid named Brandy Perryman who I played with at Texas. He was a freshman when I was a senior. He's from Garden City, Kansas. White kid. I never played with a player with the, with the stroke that that kid had. Really? He, he bailed me out so many times in my senior year when I'm over there with nowhere to go. <laughs> He was there. I mean, he actually He's, helped us win the conference championship that year. No, no, the kid Brandy Perriman, pure. You, you get the last word, mm -hmm. right? Um, bottom to the top hoops, we always want yeah. to coach, teach, educate student athletes. This is T. Wrench's moment to, to share with the next generation of potential Mr. Basketball, yeah. NBA players, yeah. leading scorers. What, what, what does T. Wrench leave the people? Just one, I mean, I could going for, 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 for days about it, anything, but right now it's the process, right? Everybody, oh, the process, the process. Yeah, yeah. We talked about a lot about early formative years, mm -hmm. and we were just in the process. We never talked about, I'm just letting the process, we just lived the process. Yes. My thing now, and it's, it's more so the people guiding these kids, like, we talk more so about the finish line these days. Oh, getting him ready for the league. Oh, I'm getting, oh, he's a pro. Like. Let's get back to letting these kids enjoy the, the journey, the process, um, understand how to build a complete young man and a complete player as we approach that, 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 that end game. Right? I, just, I, just, I get really bothered by the talk of the process, but it seemed like a lot of people skipping the process just trying to get to the end game. So I would just say, man, immerse yourself in the daily grind because for me, and I bet you, you would say the same thing, Besides, you know, I get the accolades and all that, but the fun part was spending time with dudes like you and Book and Orlando and, you know, sitting after practice and riding the bus home and all of the things that came as a, as a spinoff from being on the basketball team. Those are the things that, when I reflect back, bring me joy, keep us as a family so we still have great relationships to this day. It was actually about what we did together. Because all of that stuff is gone now. Yeah, my, my Achilles hurt. I can't play no more like that, but I can get a call you and we can talk about all that stuff and all this other stuff and I still get those feelings again. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. really enjoy the journey. Get immersed in your day-to-day -day, um, grind. And, you know, the end game will be there for you. But Whatever you know, it is. Yeah, whatever it is. But don't skip any steps in between. That's my thing. Bro. My brother, all day, all day. I love you. Love. Great, great, great... Um, story and, and, and sharing and I'm proud of you and I know one day I'm gonna be watching you on the division one sideline no question. and um, I'm gonna be in the front row I'm gonna be the biggest fan yeah, I got the tickets too you already know there it is ninety three dollars too you got <laughs> yo it's T Rencher St. Ray's alum University of Texas all-time leading scorer New York legend in my mind but you watch it from the bottom to the top hoops tune in <laughs>